Blind Pew here. In this transmission you've joined me for part 2 of my exploration project to land on every landable planet in the solar system. If you missed the first part of my transmission please click on the link that should be appearing about. Now. As you can see we have now reached Jupiter. We will be visiting all three of the landable Jovian moons of Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. We will skip the moon of Io and its orbiting space station as the atmosphere on Io prevents our landing. So. Here we are approaching the moon of Europa. The smallest of the four Jovian moons. The so called Galilean satellite discovered by Galileo. It is nevertheless still the sixth largest moon in the solar system. The moon is named from Greek mythology after Europa, mother of King Minos of Crete. Orbital flight engaged. And there we are, into orbit around Europa. Just look at those unusually long crevices on the surface. Europa is known to have a surface striated by cracks and streaks, whereas craters are relatively rare. In fact it has the smoothest surface of any known solid object in the solar system. The apparent youth and smoothness of the surface have led to the hypothesis that a water ocean exists beneath it, which could conceivably serve as an abode for extraterrestrial life. His hypothesis proposes that heat from tidal flexing causes the ocean to remain liquid and drives geological activity similar to plate tectonics. Aha, intercruise. I must admit I do like this mode. Let's get into one of the crevasses. Barnard's loop in the distance again over there. These crevasses look pretty deep. Not the deepest I have seen but pretty deep and the composition at the bottom looks different to the top. From here it looks rather dirty at the bottom there. I've left the crevice now as I have picked up a settlement on my scanner. Let's go and take a look. Okay just about here now. It looks quite small. Yep. Quite small just a few buildings. Probably some sort of scientific survey. Let's land and take a closer look. Landing gear deployed. Touchdown. Never get tired of that. And into the SRV. Oh, I should have landed facing the other way. Nice view of Jupiter itself there. Huh. Not much here. Possibly the installation is mostly underground from the look of it. There is one data point here. I guess that is the way in. It is extremely icy around here. Ah there is the ship. I'll send it into orbit for now. Magnificent. Right then. Let's get this SRV up to speed and explore the wider area. Surface is pretty slippy. 
boosting vertically to get a view of the surroundings. Oof. I need to time my vertical boosts better to minimize impact on landing. Interesting. What is this? Bronzite can't right? Of course I shoot it. It broke in two pieces. Let's pick them up. Sitems identify them as unknown materials at this stage it seems. I've opened my cargo scoop. Hopefully I can pick these up. There we go. New material discovered. Um, not that exotic then. Phosphorus. More interesting. Let's get these back to the ship, which you will notice I have recalled from orbit. Carefully does it. You know, this is a rather beautiful moon. I'm sure it has other secrets. And so, back into the ship. Lift off. Yep. Quite a stunning vista. Landing gear retracted. I'll certainly be coming back here. Right. Let's get out of here. The moon of Ganymede is next. Four. Three. Two. One. Engage. As we head into orbit we can see those deep crevices again. I can't help thinking there is something to be found in those. It will require further exploration at some point. So approaching the moon of Ganymede. Named after Ganymede the cupbearer to the gods in Greek mythology, it is the largest moon of Jupiter and in the solar system, and the only moon known to have a magnetosphere. Probably created through convection within its liquid iron core it is the ninth largest object in the solar system, and the largest without a substantial atmosphere. Its surface is composed of two main types of terrain. Ancient dark regions, saturated with impact craters, cover about a third of the satellite. Lighter, slightly less ancient, regions crosscut by extensive grooves and ridges cover the remainder. The cause of the light terrain's disrupted geology is not fully known. Probably tectonic. So, approaching a settlement on the surface. Durrance Camp. From the looks of the surrounding region and the intense crater marks, this is the darker region I just mentioned. This settlement looks quite substantial. Looks like they have docks. I've requested docking so we can land and take a look around. Easy does it. Barnard's loop in the distance again. Seems I am always looking at that. Docking successful. Engines disengaged. And out in the SRV. It's not quite Ehrlich City on Mercury but it's pretty substantial nevertheless. Aha. Uh -huh. A road. This looks more substantial. Must be the way out. Yes. There is the exit. Let's take a look outside the settlement. Boosting for a good view of the surroundings. And now boosting to minimize impact on landing. Hey. What is this thing? A Goliath? Some sort of drone for the settlement. Guess I startled it. Right. 
Let's get some speed up and take a look out here. I'm not finding much. One last vertical boost so I can take a good look at the far surrounding. Nope there does not seem to be much of note in the immediate vicinity. Boosting to minimize impact on landing. Didn't quite get that right. Recalling ship. And lift off. Let's buzz Darren's camp with a flyby before we go. And so on now to the last Jovian moon we can land on. Callisto. Named after Greek mythology Callisto was an nymph transformed into a bear and set among the stars. It is the third largest moon in the solar system and the second largest in the Jovian system, after Ganymede. It is not part of the orbital resonance that affects three inner satellites Io, Europa and Ganymede and thus does not experience appreciable tidal heating. Callisto's rotation is tightly locked to its orbit around Jupiter, so that the same hemisphere always faces inward, consequently Jupiter appears to stand nearly still in Callisto's sky. The surface of Callisto is the oldest and most heavily cratered in the solar system. It does not show any signatures of subsurface processes such as plate tectonics or volcanism. It possibly has a subsurface ocean at a depth of 150 kilometers that possibly could harbor life but conditions are thought to be less favorable than on nearby Europa. We are now approaching a settlement on the dark side of Callisto. Schottky Reformatory. Let's do a flyby of those towers over there. We can clearly land here but I'm not going to. I want to take a look at the other side of the planet. So let's boost back up into orbit. It is the quickest way to travel large planetary distances. Frameship drive charging. Round we go to the bright side of the moon. And back out of orbit. Whoa. Thought I was coming in a bit fast there. And landing, having inadvertently switched my childs off whilst fumbling for the landing gear. Ugh. Should have waited for the childs to come online. Oh well. Looks quite different on this side of the moon into the SRV. Getting some nice speed up now. Oops. I seem to have picked something unusual up on my scanner. I'm trying to locate it. In this direction somewhere. Hey a drone. Is it friendly? Clearly not. That will teach him. What was it guarding I wonder? Not much from the look of it.
a single canister of narcotics. Well. I certainly don't want that. Let's destroy it. Nice. The terrain has got rather lumpy all of a sudden. Recalling ship. Haha. Ha. I did not realize you could attack your own ship. Useful to know you get a warning that your ship is under attack when out of it then. Back into the ship there. And off we go. Look at that massive crater over there. Perhaps there is more going on here than I found out. So now. We approach Saturn and its landable moons of Enceladus, Tethys, Dion, Rhea and Diapetus. Not Titan as it has an atmosphere preventing landing. As you know Saturn has a prominent ring system that consists of 9 continuous main rings and 3 discontinuous arcs and that is composed mostly of ice particles with a smaller amount of rocky debris and dust. 62 moons are known to orbit Saturn, of which 53 are officially named. This does not include the hundreds of moon LUDs comprising the rings. So there are quite a few major landable moons and this will be an extremely interesting set of explorations. But unfortunately, one for my next transmission. Until then, good luck commanders, and I'll see you out there. Right over the road. I caught some nice air there. Or, as there is no atmosphere here, I caught some space. Unfortunately the SRV hull is now down to 50%. This appears to be a ring road around the base. Let's follow it. Aha. Uh -huh. What is this? Exit to surface. Sounds interesting. Let's take a look. Full speed ahead. A tunnel. I assume this takes us through the wall we landed on and outside the city then. Hope 